Well, I've just uh, checked on the torque wrench setting and it's near enough seven Newton meters, uh, 60 feet pounds. So I've got that as near as I can on my little gauge. It's difficult to see, but uh, you can take it from me that that's just near enough seven meters. Then you would tighten that little nut back up so that it didn't alter the setting. That's if that's tight, it will alter the setting. So then all you've got to do basically is. Um, Go around your and torque them down, but obviously I can't. I can't do this and um, torque the nuts down because I've got to hold the block. So you can take it from me that I'm just going to tighten these um, bolts up to the required torque, and then I'll come back and tell you all about the uh, lock tabs. Now um, I've tightened all these. Um, nuts up now and underneath every nut is a little lock tab now the die has will tell you to change all them for brand new ones but they've only ever been used once they've been used to assemble the engine and you've opened them out to get the nut off and in my opinion I just think it's it's not worth it it's not a Formula One engine and you're trying to you're trying to do the job um, you know without spending too much money so these little tabs you've just got to lock once you've got your your torques your nuts all torqued down and you can just see the cranks turning I can turn that crank with one finger so I know there's no there's no binding anywhere on that crank and um, the other thing I want to mention is you might think that I didn't put very much grease on those journals but I found from experience that um, this grease isn't cheap if you buy some decent assembly grease and you want decent stuff um, the more grease you put on there that clearance when the journals are nipped down is I don't know probably half as thick as a human hair not not very much at all and all you're gonna do you're going to squash all that grease right out and it's just going to get stuck to the side of the cam. So for all these people that think, well, blather loads of grease on it, the reason I don't do it is because I'd rather just have the grease doing what it's supposed to do rather than getting squashed out and absorbed with the rest of the oil and then get flushed away. So that's my view on it. Uh, if you want to waste your money and put loads of grease on, you do that. But there's enough lubrication on that crank. The engine will start within uh, maybe five or six turns. So you don't need to worry too much. As long as you've got something on there to stop it running metal on metal. So that's what I'd do there. Now these lock tabs, as you can see, there's a little lock tab there. You must remember to knock those back up. Because um, if you don't, there's a chance that your nuts... Um, that you've talked down it's highly unlikely that they would come loose but with all the vibration on these little engines they just want the lock tabs knocking over now again i can't do this while i'm holding the phone so i'll have to pause it again and uh, i'll just confirm with you when that's done right um the locking tabs have all been bent over now so you can buy new ones if you want i personally didn't Save money where you can, but if it's an essential, you've got to spend it. But in my opinion, you can use those again. You can you can buy new ones, obviously, if you want. So that's the crank all torqued up. It's tightened up. Everything's working as it should. And the crank turned freely, which is the main objective. And now we can move on to the um, inserting the... Uh, putting the piston rings together onto the pistons because we've got to do that obviously before we uh, put them into the bar so I hope you enjoyed that little short one uh, and um, as I said it is essential that you get a torque wrench because uh, it is a, an essential piece of kit when you're doing uh, engine jobs and um, there you can just see the, the gauge there now I think but anyway you'll 
You'll see what you can buy. They're not expensive and they save a lot of guesswork. You can't guess these things, they're high tensile bolts and they're designed to go up to a certain torque. I will point out that when you have finished doing your torquing, uh, torque wrench settings, the little knurled nut on the end, you need to slacken that back off again and then unwind your, um, your torque wrench back so that it's got no uh, tension on it at all. That way it will uh, keep an accurate reading. Uh, and they're accurate enough for the DIY. Uh, they're maybe not good for a Formula One team. But uh, for a DIY man, um, they're good enough. I think this one was about 20 quid and I've used it. I've had this torque wrench now for probably um, 15 years. It's done me very well. And I use it for all the major tightening jobs that you need to do. Cylinder heads, con rods and all that sort of stuff. Bearings. Uh, and you know you all have wheel nuts even. It's a big tommy bar as well as a torque wrench. You can tighten your wheel nuts up with it and torque them up nicely as well. So there you go. I think 20 quid that's all it was. Look for one on flea bay if you want. And there you go. But uh, if you just undo that nailed nut again at the end, slacken it back off again. And then, obviously it's difficult with one hand. just winding itself back off again now look you can see and that's right it's, that's the handles just like so it's it's not storing up any tension in there you'll know you've got the right setting because as soon as you get to the uh, set torque it'll click don't turn it any further than the click and you know it's up to the maximum torque already so thanks for watching and i hope i haven't bored you too much